And the nominees are in for a tough race. The film award season just hit fifth gear after the shortlist was announced for this year's 91st Academy Awards. So who made it? Well, Art House cinema darling Yorgo Lanthimos is returning to the awards for a second time. The Greek director's historical satire, The Favorite, got 10 nominations, including Best Director and Best Picture. Blockbuster champion Alfonso Cuaron is this year's other big contender. He returned to his indie filmmaking roots with Roma, which incidentally is a Netflix release. A series of racially diverse films have also been given the Oscar nod. Black Panther, Black Klansman, and If Beale Street Could Talk, all features that could potentially dominate the show. But one name that hasn't yet been called out is the Master of Ceremonies. As of right now, the Oscars are still without a host just weeks before the big night. Now let's jump right into the Oscar talk with me in the studio, Ali Arakan. He's a film critic based here in Istanbul, writes for a whole host of publications. Great to have you here in the studio to speak with us. And uh, joining us from New York is Lauren Moraski. She's a senior editor with HuffPost. I've been so excited to speak to you both all day. Uh, we want to get started really with Best Picture. Right. It's, uh, it's certainly an incredibly diverse selection here, and I'm addressing you both, but let's start with Ollie. Mm -hmm. I'm so surprised that Black Panther uh, was included mm -hmm. in the nominations list. The first superhero film to be nominated for a, a, an Academy Award for Best Picture, and it's running beside a film like Roma. Just take us through what uh, the Academy Award members are thinking. What are the Oscars trying to do this year? Well, they're trying to keep up with the times, I think, and uh, this is really the result of uh, the Academy's diversification push um, about five years ago when they extended uh, the uh, members, the membership and uh, internationally, uh, more women, more people of colour. Um, and it's the result really of that uh, initiative. Um, the past two years we really saw the result, well, we saw indications of it, mm -hmm. but this year we're really finally seeing the results. In a bizarre way, um, you've got Roma, um, a, a Mexican film, a black and white Mexican film, uh, Spanish language, dare I use artsy film, mm -hmm. um, 10 nominations, the favorite, Again, um, okay, it is a period piece, but at the same time, it is, a, is an anarchic period piece with, with queer themes, well, a, a queer triangle at its center. You've got that. And at the same time, you've got Black Panther, the first superhero movie, Black Klansman, which got the first director's, uh, best director nomination for mm -hmm. Spike Lee, which is crazy to think about. So you've got that, but at the same time, you've got crowd pleasers as well like A Star Is Born, um, $200 million in the bank, um, Bohemian Rhapsody, $800 million uh, internationally, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody and, and Green Book, for example, those two weren't really that well reviewed. So they can, it, they can feel like throwbacks to, to, to the yesteryear of, 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 of Oscar season. Um, but looking at that, looking at that wide range of films, you can see that what the Academy really tried to do five years ago, three years ago, uh, has really started paying off. Lauren, I want to ask you the same question. Is it what Ali is saying? Is this the Oscars getting with the times? Or were you as surprised as I was? Well, you know, ratings for the Oscars have been down uh, over the years. Last year, they were down at a whopping 20 percent, which is quite high. And I think the Academy is doing what it can for inclusivity and also trying to please the crowd as well. Uh, films like A Star is Born and um, uh, Black Panther were very highly reviewed, and they happen to be very big blockbusters as well. So it's nice to see both of that in the mix, along with some independent films uh, in there, too. So is this about also getting more people to watch the Oscars itself, the ceremony on Oscar night, Lauren? Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Um, they're reduce, they're, the Academy is trying to do a lot to uh, attract viewers. They're reducing the entire ceremony to three hours. They're going to give some awards um, off camera, and they're going to jazz things up. I'm curious to see how they're going to pull this off without a host to make it interesting for the viewers. Let's let's just talk about that because that is sort of the elephant in the room or the elephant in the uh, 
Dolby Theater, I should say. Still no host. Are they going to go with that one, Ollie? They are going to go with that one. They've announced that they are going to have no host this year, which is something that they have done previously a, a few times, but three, four times. But it didn't go down well, did it? No, 1989, <laughs> I think it was Rob Lowe and Snow White singing uh, Proud Mary. Yeah, it was kind uh, of bizarre. I think audiences uh, yes, weren't which, too sure which, about it. <laughs> yes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this time it'll be... Well, <laughs> My prediction is Lin Manuel Miranda is going to rap about something or other. Sure. You know, I mean, it's just. But the, here's the thing: um, uh, the host is very is is really important for the for the first 12, 15 minutes at the top of the show. Uh, they you know set the stage, make people feel comfortable mm -hmm. in the theatre. Uh, the people watching at home laugh at the jokes, and then and then a bunch of awards are given out. So. Mm -hmm. Sure, it is going to affect the ceremony itself. It's going to be very different from the past, well, 20-odd, 20 25, 30 years, mm -hmm. but it's not unheard of. And it's and uh, as Lauren said, you know, they're going to keep the show very short and you've got a lot of nominees, a lot of very popular nominees now. So I think, you know, they'll, they'll survive. I think it'll be a good show anyway. And people are really tuning in to see all the celebrities and, you know, listen to their speeches, aren't they? I'm going to move on to Best Director because <clears> this is really an interesting category. It's a bit of a wild one, isn't it? Uh, some of the movies that traditionally get the most buzz mm. don't necessarily mean that they're the best, that their directors are going to get an Oscar nod as well. Some interesting ones this year who've made the list, Spike Lee, as you mentioned, Dolly, mm. or Pavel Pavlovsky's uh, Cold War, whose mm. movies didn't make it into the Best Picture shortlist. No. How are you reading uh, the nominees? Well, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great roster, really. You've got Pavel Pavlovsky, um, you've got Alfonso Cuaron, Yorgo Lanthimos, so three international directors, you know, three non-American directors. Um, the, the, the idea, and Spike Lee is, I think it's, it's, that's going to be a very good narrative. I think his people are going to carry that forward going over the, over the next few weeks. But I think it's a very strong sort of category. Uh, perhaps Barry Jenkins, with, if Beale Street could call, could, could have kind of uh, got in there. Alas, they didn't, but, you know, she's young. <laughs> has already got one. Lauren, I'm, I'm sorry it's a woman asking a woman about women, but I have to ask where all the yeah. women are. It's 2019, no female director is on the list. I know, I know. It's sad to see that. It's an tr ongoing trend. We only saw one woman ever win, and that was, of course, Catherine Bigelow in, I think, 2010 for The Hurt Locker. Last year, we saw Greta Gerwig get nominated for Lady Bird. Um, but like he said, the, the the category is super strong. There were some um, female American and uh, British directors that could have been nominated, but those films just haven't gained the same amount of traction as the films that were nominated in this case. So you have to wonder, wh where does this problem begin? Is it begin at the studio level, the marketing level? Yeah. Um, I would love to see more women in this category. I was disappointed to see that, but there, there wasn't really a front runner to say, oh, this is going to, you know, this person's going to get it, like last year with Lady, uh, Lady Bird with Greta Gerwig. That's oh, right. It's a real shame. Let's just move on to the women who could be winning awards. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of easy predictions here. Lady Gaga, uh, whose film I watched this morning, wasn't hugely impressed with the performance. Um, who Did do you, you like think? the song? Did you like Shallow? I loved the song, and I think she's going to win that song. Mm -hmm. um, as to her performance, I mean, not that this is about what I think, mm -hmm. but uh, I found it very subtle um, and real and raw, and I'm sure that's why she got the Oscar nod. But there were plenty of other women in the category who are some real contenders? Well, Glenn Close, I think. Uh, you know, when the when the when the when the season started, no one was. The, the, people were talking about how Glenn Close would be like the number five, the the fifth nominee sort of thing, and and she's got the Globe. At the, the odds, she's the odds-on favorite to win uh, a, the a Screen Actors Guild Award, and it looks like she's going. She she's she's definitely front runner for me because I'm a huge fan of The Peep Show, a, a, a great British sitcom. I want Olivia Colman to win. I'm not a big fan of The Favourite, but her performance is absolutely fantastic. You got a chance to see it? Very rare. I did, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, but yeah, I did. I, um, and uh, to, if, to be perfectly honest, I saw it. I saw it a double bill in the States with um, Vox Lux, which got no love, but Natalie Portman should have been in here. I, her performance in Vox Lux was, was, Vox Lux was great. 
Lauren, interesting that uh, two of the women in this category, Lady Gaga and Yarlitza Aparicio, aren't actually actresses by profession. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like seeing that. I mean, I just don't know how, how these women do it. They're super talented. I wish I had an inch of their talent and I would, uh, I'd be soaring. But yeah, it's nice to see Lady Gaga. It was the first time that um, a woman was nominated for um, Best Actress and the Best Song category. So that's really nice to see. Of course, we didn't see Lady Gaga win the Night of the Golden Globes. It deservedly went to Glenn Close. The Wife was a great, great film and she was wonderful in it. Um, I have to agree. I think Glenn Close is probably the front runner here. Uh, and if Lady Gaga loses out in this category, it'll be nice to see her get an Oscar uh, for uh, the best original song category. Lauren, I want to ask you about the best actors category. Uh, Rami Malek, whose performance uh, I also happened to see in, in Bohemian Rhapsody, I thought it was absolutely uncanny. It was like Freddie Mercury was brought back to life. Um, he's got all the momentum, doesn't he, after that Golden Globe win? Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. He was phenomenal as Freddie Mercury. Critics were mixed on the film as a whole, but you can't deny his talent and the uncanny, the perfect word to describe it, his appearances, the way he sang, you know, the, everything about it was was perfect. Uh, that said, that category is really strong, too. Um, Viggo Mortensen is gaining some traction with Green Book. Of course, we have Christian Bale for Vice. So it's a very strong category. So I think this one is up for grabs. Right, it's time to move on to Netflix because everyone's talking about it. Uh, you know, they've really uh, struggled to kind of crack the Oscars shell uh, so far. 13 nominations though this year. Mm -hmm. What does it all mean? Well, it, it, this is the, I think the, uh, the main thing that the, that 10 nominations first for Roma, what that means is, I mean, some people had this uh, were afraid of um, certain members of the Academy having a, an anti-streaming bias. Mm -hmm. So this obviously is um, uh, a, a perfect example um, of that being not really taken into account if the film was good. But at the same time, there was this... Uh, this campaign of uh, making sure that, you know, people talking about how Roma should be seen on the big screen and whatever. So, you know, um, right now, I think it's very early to tell, but Netflix is here to stay as a, I can make that prediction. Wow, that is bold. But <laughs> I know, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, it certainly looks like it. Lauren, I'm going to come to you in a bit. I just want to move on to another awards uh category that's uh, come up, and this is going to be something many people will surely be entertained by. Uh, this is well, been a chat about the best of the best. Let's flip things around and take a look at the best of the worst. The nominations are also out for the 39th annual Golden Raspberry Awards, better known as the Razzies. The organizers of the anti-Oscars say it was a year full of disasters, both on and off screen. Me. Donald J. Trump as himself in Death of a Nation. Well, this year, four movies are leading the pack with six nominations, including John Travolta's Gotti. His portrayal of crime boss John Gotti earned him a Worst Actor nomination, but that wasn't the category's biggest surprise. U.S. President Donald Trump received a nod just for being himself in the docudrama Death of a Nation with wife Melania getting a nod for Worst Supporting Actress in Fahrenheit 11.9. And if any of them dare to show up to pick up their prizes, winners will be given a gold spray-painted raspberry trophy at a ceremony just before Oscars night. Well, um, let's bring you both back in. I was shocked to see names like Dame Helen Mirren, Melissa McCarthy, who's also on the nominations list for the Academy Awards, getting Razzie recognition. Mm -hmm. uh, Lauren, let's start with you, because I left you hanging there earlier. What do you make of the Razzie list this year? Oh, my goodness. Well, all I could say is that, uh, you know, bad films happen to good people. And I think this is the perfect <laughs> example of that. You have some big names that took on roles and they took on movies that just were slammed by critics. You know, the fans didn't like it. And uh, you just have to hope that the next role that they take on is better than the last. Ali, some are saying that, uh, you know, 
this year, Razzie didn't have to go too far to put this list together because, you know, the skeptics and the critics are saying, well, the quality of the Oscars nominations wasn't that great either. Is that a, a tall statement to make? Is it unfair to say, you know what, Hollywood films are actually getting worse by the year? Or is that entirely unfair? And, you know, is it bad to generalize? Is it all subjective anyway? Well, it's different films for different needs, you know. And as a, to be perfectly honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the, of the, the concept of, of the Razzies and, and, and really the fact that, you know, people are ironically awarding the worst Film of the Year award to, you know, to, to films that people have actually worked on very hard. And as a, a good friend, uh, a, a very prominent member of, of film Twitter, Lex always says, you know, I love going to the movies. You know, the, the, the lights go down, a bunch of stuff happens in front of you. Exactly. So, you know, whatever happens, movies are an art form, are a, a, a wonderful pastime, and I don't want to bring myself into the conversation where, you know, I badmouth even, even not Dame necessarily Helen decent <laughs> films. And Gotti is good, by the way. Gotti is a good film. Wow, you it's might be in a minority. I mean, it's not good, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's enjoyable. <laughs> well, you know, before we wrap up, I do want to talk about um, messaging at this year's Oscars. And Lauren, I'm going to close off the, uh, the show with you. The Razzies certainly did a lot of Trump bashing at the Golden Globes. We had a lot of Me Too, Time's Up messaging happening. Uh, people talking about diversity, gender equality. How do you think celebrities and uh, you know people from the industry are going to use the Oscars platform this year? What are they going to try and say? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, it's too soon to tell. However, uh, without a host, we might see uh, less Trump and political talk at the start of the show. I think uh, we'll see uh, a lot of diversity talk, potentially inclusion talk, power for women, potentially in the speeches, um, depending on who wins. So I'm excited to see that. On the red carpet, we saw a slew of Time's Up pins, et cetera, last year. We'll probably see a little bit momentum this year, maybe a little bit less because it's not top of mind. I do think the focus will be on That's the films, right. but the people who want to speak out about inclusion will have an opportunity to do so. All right. Thank you, Lauren. Well, I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you both for coming on Showcase. That's it for this episode. Do head to our YouTube channel for more. Good night from all of us.